Hey friendos, welcome back. Um, we are back doing a March wrap up. Also apologies if you can hear some background tunes. <laughs> My downstairs neighbors are doing some gardening and they're blasting a fire disco playlist. But yeah, if you can hear that, um, that's what that is. But anyway, um, yeah, so I read a few books this this month um I don't I know that there's people on here which like absolutely you no know, hate I think it's wonderful that read like 15 books every month like I don't think that's ever gonna be me <laughs> so um yeah don't expect these super long videos because I I'm just not not that kind of gal. I also like to watch TV <laughs> and do other things that maybe aren't as um, constructive than reading, but you know, I love my a good dose of The Real Housewives. I hate to say it, but that's the truth, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, this isn't like the biggest stack you've ever seen, but um, yeah, I guess just disclaimer. And also, I don't think you'll ever see a TBR video from me on this channel because I just like going into the month like not knowing where it's going to take me with no real direction. <laughs> I just kind of pick whatever book I see that like interests me, that I'm in the mood to read. I guess you could say I'm like a moody reader. Um, so yeah, none of that TBR stuff because I don't want to restrict myself. You know what I mean? So anyways, yeah, those are, I guess, two two things I wanted to get out of the way, but I had a really good reading month. Um, a lot of uh, different stuff that I read this month, um, and honestly, they were all awesome. So I have nothing but, nothing but good things to say about the books we're going to be talking about today. Um, okay, so I'm not going to go in any particular order because truth be told, like I don't really remember the order in which I read these. This month has been kind of intense for me. I don't think I've mentioned this, but... Um, I'm studying for the LSAT and I'm taking it, um, next Saturday. So this is like the last stretch. This month in general was a little bit intense for me because I was also working a lot, a lot. Um, but yeah, this past week has just been like <laughs> high, <laughs> high intensity. So, um, I've just, I've had a lot on my plate. So why was I saying that? I guess because I don't remember what books I read. Anyways, whatever. As you can tell, I'm like more scattered between than I usually am. But anyways, okay, back to the books. Um, Weather by Jenny Ophel. I loved this guy and I actually did kind of like a reading vlog, except not really because I had just read um, a few a few pages. But uh, basically, it's a story. We follow this woman and uh, her life as a librarian or library technician uh, in a college, as well as her um, involvement with a um, like a past mentor of hers or a past um, professor when she was doing her, I don't know if it was undergrad or I think it was actually her uh, postgraduate work. Um, her mentor kind of brings um, her into her latest endeavor and she hosts a podcast about like talking about the climate crisis and just um, end of the world like preparedness. <laughs> um, and so she starts, our like main gal starts um, answering uh, the mentors podcast um, email. And so we see little glimpses of people um, writing in like, what should I do to prepare for like the end of the world? And that um, tension or those concerns start to seep through into her like normal day-to-day -day life and we just essentially follow I want to say like imagine you're following like a month of someone's life and they're just documenting the mundane as well as just the more excitable bits of that month into a book like that's essentially what this is and I weirdly really liked it it was very enjoyable like I said in, in that video like it was actually just really soothing and relatable to read about the mundane aspects of all of our lives that we omit from conversations um or a lot of the times in books you know you don't really read the nitty gritty you know details and um interactions with your partner for example or your kids and um i also really liked how we see the 
main character's relationship with her brother who um, has uh, substance abuse issues. So I found that really interesting. That was kind of like a side plot, I guess you could say, of the story. But yeah, and it's like I said in that video as well, it's written in these really digestible, like fragmentary bits. So truth be told, I started that book um, when I did that blog, that reading blog. And then the next day throughout my shift, I just finished this guy and I really liked reading it like that. I think it, it was very effective and made it more enjoyable for me to just kind of read this um, style of book in just one sitting. Um, but yeah, 10 out of 10. I liked it a lot. All right, the next one, I feel like I've honestly talked about most of these, but the next one I read was Detransition Baby. And I friggin' loved this book. Now I've, I mean, I was recommending it to people before I read it, but now that I have even more authority, anyone that's like, oh, you know what book do you recommend or what have you a lot of people actually ask me like what have you been reading or like what did you just read lately that you really liked and I always point people to this because I just found it so interesting fast-paced and also quite complex um it follows a couple who uh Reese and Amy and Amy um detransitions um and um Ames ends up getting his boss pregnant and uh, they're navigating um, this news as well as how to move forward, whether the boss uh, wants to keep this child or not, as well as we see an introduction of Reese back into the fold, Ames's ex-girlfriend, um, as they, uh, as Ames proposes to both of these uh, women if they want to raise this child together. So um, you're in constant conversation with the construction of or I guess the deconstruction of the typical heteronormative nuclear family and um, notions around motherhood and as well as um, thinking through like pregnancy in general and how that can actually be quite of an isolating complex um, identity um, and another thing that I found really interesting that is kind of an aside but um, Rebecca and one of her her latest videos, she mentioned that she um, had listened to uh, the author of this book, uh, Tori Peters. Um, she was a guest in a podcast, and I'll list it down below. Makes a commentary in that podcast, which I found quite interesting, about how um, cis women are also failing at gender in the sense that, similar to um, trans women, we too are actively trying to perform and construct our um, gender and our and our performance around that and it's not something that comes like innately we're all also you know whether that might be reconstruction reconstructing our appearance and they cite um the kardashians as a really good case study for that um as well as just our um failings as what you know women are supposed to uh embody or be like anyways I am not <laughs> being eloquent at the moment. Um, so I would highly recommend listening to that podcast. It's only like 25 minutes long, but I just, um, there's a lot of food for thought there and I found it quite insightful and made me appreciate the book as well as um, this awesome uh, trans uh, author. So highly recommend it and I'll just link it down below. All right, the next book is non fiction and it's A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. I absolutely loved this book. Similar to Weather, I read this in one sitting and I encourage you to do so as well. It's quite a thin book. Um, he, it's basically a living uh, memoir. Uh, basically the author reflects on his experiences as an indigenous um, boy here in Canada. Um, he weaves in um, theoretical works by like Foucault and Butler. And I just found that really interesting as well that he's weaving in his own experiences with um, other voices that have influenced the way that he looks at the world and thinking through things around sexuality, power, colonialism, um, love, sexuality. And um, yeah, I love that. Another point that I'll make about this is that um, because this guy is a poet, the way that he writes, like every word is so intentional and so powerful that it makes this 
a read that you want to like highlight or reread certain passages because they're so powerful. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Ocean Vong. I'm just reading on Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous, and I see a lot of parallels between um, the use of language in both of these works. So really appreciated that, incredibly profound and lyrical. Another thing I really appreciated about this book is that he situates us in the Canadian context of um, colonial violence, um, that Indigenous bodies continue to uh, feel within their communities, within their own bodies, their identities. And I thought that was really uh, important in any work that is talking about um, indigenous experience within the settler colonial state. So, all right, the next book is How to Order the Universe. I won't talk very much about this because again, I ranted about this in a video already, but it is a beautiful translated text by Maria Jose Ferrada. Um, just really darling. I loved this book, it was so cute. Um, I shouldn't say cute because that just, I feel like I'm like trivializing the very important themes and topics that are discussed in this book. But um, if you feel so inclined to know a little bit more about this book, you can watch my other video <laughs> about this, but yeah. Um, then I read How Long Till Black, or well, actually, no, I read this before this one, but like I said, we're not doing this in order. Um, I read How Long Till Black Future Month. Uh, this is a book of short science fiction stories. Uh, super cool. This honestly made me be even more in awe of um, N.K. Jemisin's uh, writing and the versatility in her writing and uh, the different avenues within the realm of science fiction that she explores. These stories range from like this, uh, actually no, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna say like what the stories are because I think it's more interesting when you go into it, into this not knowing very much um, and just be blown away by her uh imaginative mind, her <laughs> incredible imaginative uh, worlds that she crafts. Um, yeah, very cool. And I'm trying to read a bit more science fiction just because my boyfriend has introduced me to this genre and I've really enjoyed what I've read so far and I just kind of want to continue on my journey. Okay, the last book, which this one actually was the last book I read this month, is um, Rachel Cusk's Outline. This has been highly recommended by my bays, um, Rebecca and Ben Green. They loved this book and um, I'm no exception. I also thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, we follow the narrator who is a woman who's teaching a writer's workshop uh, in Greece, in Athens. She is an author or a writer herself and basically we are um, let into very intimate private conversations that she has with several people she either meets or knows. Um, and it's just basically an exploration on memory um, and a plethora of other things. I actually filmed a uh, one of my work days where I talk about this and I think I will hold off on saying anything more about this book until, and then I'm just gonna do a little tease. <laughs> so you guys are just gonna have to wait until I post that other video. I just figured I would do my April uh, wrap up or March wrap up first and then I'll upload that one. But uh, yes, I talk more in depth about, about this book, but um, it's not overhyped. It's very uh, engrossing and similar to uh, the other two books I mentioned, I think this is one of those books where you get more of it if you read it than one sitting um, because you feel like you're in, um, I, I was gonna say vacation, but she's not really there on vacation, but you feel like you're on this trip with the um, main voice of this book uh, if you read it within just like one sitting. So anyway, that's all I have for you today, folks short and sweet. I hope I didn't ramble for too long, but, um, yeah, hopefully I'll have more time to read, uh, come April because I will be done with my studying. Hallelujah. I never, <laughs> I never thought this day would come. Um, so yeah, we'll see what April has in store for us in terms of reading. 
Uh, I'm really excited to read uh, There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job. I, I mentioned that in a previous video as well, which I haven't gotten around to reading. I also ordered a few books from the library, which I am stoked for. I feel like the library doesn't get that much love and I don't know why. Like I was one of those people that never stepped foot in my local, inside my local library and I did the other week and I was just like, this is sick. I love it. I'll be coming back more often. So anyways, yeah, I ordered some books from the library that I'm going to pick up soon and yeah. Um, hope you guys liked this wrap up. I hope you're having a beauty of a week and uh yeah, I'll see you guys when I am free. <laughs> it's, I'm talking like studying for the LSAT was like torturous and it honestly, it, it could have been a lot worse, but I'm just so happy to be done. So anyways, um, enough, enough of me rambling. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye. <laughs>